really intense video here of the moments a school police officer says he was forced to shoot. Today, CCSD releasing that body camera video from a shooting at Western High School from last week. News 3's Denise Ross joins us live from the school. And Denise, everyone involved is expected to be okay. Yeah, Marie, this is the first officer involved shooting for school police in 17 years. What started as a fight here at Western High School escalating quickly. The video is short, showing tense moments outside Western High School last Tuesday. Clark County School Police Officer Christopher Knight calling in reports of a person with a gun. I have a vehicle that flashed a 413 at students in the east parking lot. That's when a black Ford Fusion is seen making a U-turn through the parking lot, knocking a female student to the ground. Officer Knight fires three rounds. Yo, yeah, what? Stop the car! Lieutenant Brian Zink with CCSD police says there were four juveniles in the car. Two were hit by gunfire and drove themselves to the hospital with minor injuries. None of the four, he says, are students with CCSD. They reported to Metro that they were there to visit some friends. Uh, there had been some trash talk on social media and they were there for that reason. And Zink says, thankfully, the student who was run down also treated and released. Parents, though, understandably concerned. I used to go to this school. It's always happened here. There's always been fights at Western, high school fights. But, yeah, the, the shooting was different, I guess. In fact, the shooting is the first for school district police since 2005 when an officer fired at an 18-year-old man who witnesses say was driving directly at officers outside Palo Verde High School. In that case, no one was hurt. Our officers really work hard to build relationships with the staff and the students on the campus. Zink says having school police officers on campus makes a difference. The immediate response and then when Metro comes in to assist, it's just a force multiplier. As for this latest incident, Zink says a gun was later found inside the black Ford. The driver booked into the juvenile detention center on charges of battery with a deadly weapon, possession of a dangerous weapon on school property, and disregard for public safety. Now, so far, the other juveniles inside that car have not been charged, but Lieutenant Zink says this investigation is ongoing. Also developing tonight, the search for a suspect that police say shot and killed a man in an East Valley apartment before running off. Katie Munch has been on the story since the news broke. You can see crime scene investigators are still here processing the scene. Now, I talked to neighbors in the area who say this apartment complex where the shooting happened is known to have a lot of trouble. Veteran William Lyle says when he walked outside to a swarm of LVMPD officers in yellow tape, he knew it had to involve one apartment. No, we all already know. Okay. We all already know that that is a hot spot right there. Investigators say they found a man shot inside that apartment near Bonanza and Eastern around 2.30 today. But by the time they got him to a hospital, he had already died. What we have learned is that the victim was inside the apartment with several individuals when an unknown black male arrived, that unknown black male entered and there was an argument between the victim and the suspect. Officers say the two had an argument several days ago too, but this time officers say the disagreement led to gunfire. We believe there were several other people inside the apartment who were witnesses. However, they fled prior to police arriving. The victim is described as a black male in his 40s, while the suspect, they say, is also a black male in his 40s or 50s. Detectives tell us neither of them is listed as the renter. Anytime you go by there, any number of people could be sitting out front or going in and out of that apartment like they live there, and they don't. Officers are asking anybody with information to call Crime Stoppers. You can remain anonymous and you could get a reward. Where's the hope? You know, I feel like they're just throwing these kids away. That is Sean Jerion Coleman, a former CCSD student who now works with youth. We introduced you to him in March when he shared some of his experiences when he was a student at Cheyenne High School, like the differences he saw with black students getting in trouble compared to other students. There was one time I got suspended because I got into an argument with a student because he used a racial slur. 
and when I told, but I got suspended and he didn't. Documents from a public records request uncovered the top six schools with the most expulsions in the district last semester. It also shows black students expelled at higher rates compared to other students. Desert Pines had the most expulsions, 37. While black students make up 16 percent of the population at the school, they make up 59 percent of the expulsions. In the first semester of the current school year, Canyon Springs showed the highest disproportionality amongst those schools. While black students make up 26 percent of the students at the high school, they accounted for 77 percent of the expulsions. Cheyenne High School, where Coleman used to go to school, black students make up 29 percent of the students, but made up 59 percent of the expulsions last semester. I just feel like these numbers and these statistics are really unacceptable. The reason behind explosions range from being found with weapons to bullying and, quote, campus disruptions. There should be consequences for every action, you know, but not harsh consequences, not like unruly consequences. Which brings us to what some say is a bigger problem in the district. I think there's just a bias within, you know, some of the schools and what neighborhoods they're in. As part of our mission with Crisis in the Classroom, I wanted to find out more, including what may lead to these disproportionalities. Yvette Williams, chair of the Clark County Black Caucus, says bias is one of the drivers. And we do see where one child commits the exact same infraction as another child and, depending on their race, gets treated differently. And that's no secret. That's where Williams says diversity training is needed. One of the things that we are very disappointed about in budget cuts and, and so forth has been the, the cutting of uh, or elimination of uh, the robust uh, cultural competency and discussions around cultural competency and uh, professional development for our staff. Pastor MJ Ivey, who sat on a school district diversity and inclusion task force, says changes need to happen, like hiring more diverse employees. And when you hire folks who don't identify with that language, who don't identify with that culture, then you're going to run into problems like this. And this school district has not righted the ship by hiring more African-American, Latino, Asian, and indigenous Americans here for the fifth largest school district and have the biggest culture change, we did not shift with the times. Is the district failing these students? I wouldn't use the word fail. The, the, the district is failing how to teach its own. Um, you know, state education has a responsibility as well. All of us have a responsibility to hold teachers accountable. We have to hold people accountable for what they say and how they say it. I feel like we just have to do better. Hi everybody, I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates. Thanks for watching.